السلام عليكم Did you know that the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing be upon him had a secret ultrasound machine? Yes, he used it for his secret studies in embryology. At least this will be the only explanation that the atheists will come up with by the end of that video if they insist on rejecting God altogether. I will go through some miracles in the Quran and the Hadith in this specific field and then you will have to decide if this information is from God or if the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him came up with this information using his secret ultrasound machine in the middle of the desert in the 7th century. So get ready, bring your coffee and let's start. After we published our last three videos, the Prophet's Time Machine, the Prophet's Secret Space Agency, and the Prophet's Secret Scientific Research Center, a lot of you guys asked for proof that this information in the videos were not available to anyone at the time of the Prophet. We spent hours and hours answering each one of you separately. This time we decided to go in a better approach. First, I will tell you about the science that was available in the 7th century. Then I will tell you the information that Allah revealed that went against that science. This way we can really appreciate the miracles that we're about to discuss. This is Aristotle. He wrote in nature sciences, philosophy, linguistics, economics, politics, psychology, and arts. People who read his books were considered smart in their fields. And these are some of his theories. Aristotle thought that the brain was a radiator. The blood flows inside it to cool down. This is what kept the all-important heart from overheating. Aristotle believed that men had more teeth than women. Even though he was married, he must have never counted. Aristotle thought that worms grow to be snakes. Aristotle thought that the semen converts the stored menstruation blood into solid the same way rennet converts milk into cheese. This is called the cheese analogy. Rennet curdles milk to form a cheese in the same way the human semen curdles red blood to form an infant. He thought that the woman's period blood does not stop when she's pregnant. Instead, this blood keeps clotting and clotting with the help of the rennet, i.e. the semen, and that forms the parts of the baby. Aristotle also thought that the upper part of the fetus is created first, then the lower, then the lower. Aristotle believed that the boy comes from the right testicle and the girl comes from the left testicle. He prescribed the tying off of the left testicle in men wishing to have boys. Until the French Revolution, men were still undergoing surgeries to remove their left testicle because of that belief. Aristotle believed that the boy fetus sits on the right side of the uterus, while the girl fetus sits on the left side. Let's take another example. This is Galen, the famous Roman and Greek physician, surgeon, and philosopher. He had a different theory about the formation of the human embryo. Galen said that there is a very, very, very small dwarf embryo swimming in the male sperm. And this embryo is nourished by the female semen until it grows to be a fetus. See this little dude? When he drinks the period blood, he will grow up to be a baby. Galen also believed that the sperm is just white blood. Anyway, this is Hippocrates, the famous Greek physician. He thought that babies are created from heat, and the woman's womb is like an oven that heats the baby to create its bones. I am sure I can talk about the miracles of the Quran now without anyone claiming that the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him stole this information from the scientists of his era. As you can see, scientists were so stupid. But wait, there is one more problem I wanna avoid. Some of the atheists will say, maybe he didn't get this information from scientists. Maybe he took it from the people of the book, i.e. the people of the Bible. And I wanna also close that door before anyone tries to open it. Let's read the creation of the fetus from the Bible. Job 10. Your hands shaped me and made me. Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? Milk, cheese, isn't that the cheese analogy of Aristotle? 
semen clots the woman's blood like rennet clots milk to make cheese. Clothe me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones. So skin is created before the bones and how do bones knit together the pre-existing skin and flesh? Obviously, the author of the Bible was also doing a lot of guesswork. Another example. Leviticus 6. The hyrax, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. The rabbit, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. If you don't understand what chewing the cud means, a camel, for example, can swallow huge amounts of food when there is availability. Then later, when he's hungry, a portion of that food returns back to his mouth and he starts to chew them for the second time. This helps the camel stay for longer time without the need for nutrition. Subhanallah. The problem with these two verses in the Bible is that they claim that the rabbit and the hyrax have the same shoeing mechanism. They shoe the cud. Like camels. But in reality, they don't. So again, obviously, the author of the Bible was doing a lot of guesswork, like anyone making claims at his time, Aristotle and Galen and others. Another example, Leviticus 11. All flying insects that walk on all four are to be regarded unclean to you. There are, however, some flying insects that walk on all four that you may eat. Of these, there are some examples of insects that you can eat. But all flying insects that have four legs are to be regarded as unclean. Four legs, four legs, four legs. The problem with all of these verses is that there is no insects with four legs to begin with. And before you imagine, maybe there were some weird insects in the past that doesn't exist now, the verses give examples. See, locusts, crickets, grasshoppers. This is a picture of a locust. How many legs can you see in the picture? This is a picture of a cricket. How many legs can you see? This is exactly like when Aristotle said women have fewer teeth than men. Dude, you're married. Count the teeth of your wife. Another example. Mark 4.31 It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. A mustard seed is definitely not the smallest seed on earth. So again, guesswork. I can go for hours and hours pointing out obvious scientific mistakes, but this is not our goal today. Maybe I will make a full video about that later. For now, I hope it is clear that the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, did not copy, nor from ancient science, or ancient culture, or from the Bible. If he copied, he would copy these stupid mistakes too. Instead, what we are about to see is how Allah corrected these mistakes and more in the Quran, inshallah. So let's start. In the middle of all of that ignorance, in the middle of the debate between the supporters of Aristotle, who were claiming that the baby is just a clotted period blood, and the supporters of Galen, who were saying that there is a mini dwarf embryo drinking the blood to grow. Allah revealed Surah Al-Insan. Inna khalaqna al-insana min nutfatin amshaj nabitali. Indeed, I created the human from a mixture of male and female reproductive fluid to test him. This revelation denies both ancient theories, Aristotle's one and Galen's one, as one of them denies the father's contribution to the creation of the fetus, while the other one denies the mother's contribution to the creation of the fetus. But Allah says, human is created from the mixture of both. More on that in Surah As-Sajda. Human is not created from the whole mixture of both of his parents' fluids. He is only created from sulala, a part of it. You can also find the same meaning in this hadith. The baby is not created from all the mixed fluid of the parents, just part of it. Of course, for us now, we already know that one single sperm does the job out of the millions ejaculated. But for people in the 7th century, these verses totally opposed the idea of Aristotle, that the baby is an accumulative clotting of menstruation blood stored in the womb, like the creation of cheese. 
the idea that was also adopted by the people of the book because the referral to it in the Old Testament. This idea marks the long conflict in embryology between the Quran and ancient science and common belief on the other side. And we will go through this conflict step by step in this video, inshallah. Wait until you hear the rest of it. The second part of the conflict between the words of Allah and the sciences of the 7th century was the idea of menstruation blood. All the scientists of that era believed that menstruation blood played a role in reproduction. Aristotle and the Bible with the cheese theory and Galen with the mini dwarf drinking the blood theory. But our beloved Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said the opposite. He said, The man's fluid for reproduction is white and the woman's fluid for reproduction is yellow. Well, the man's fluid is easy. You don't need scientific equipment to know that. But the woman's fluid cannot be seen with the naked eye's observation. And according to the very old scientific books, it's not yellow. It was always confused to be blood. But the hadith says it's yellow. Mm, I think we need high-end modern equipment to validate that statement. So, according to the Daily Mail, these pictures were published in New Scientist magazine shows that translucent yellow sphere emerging in 15 minutes. Translucent yellow. This color can only be seen using modern technology because color changes after that. And as it comes out of the body, it's already too late. Of course, you understand what I'm saying. No need for me to explain further. This is the second example that shows the difference between the words of Allah and the ancient science and beliefs. Wait to see more. One of the unfortunate beliefs in history that resulted in great oppression for women for hundreds of years was the sex of the baby. A lot of women were oppressed, divorced, humiliated, sometimes persecuted as their husbands wanted boys and accused her of being the reason they got a baby girl. Islam fixed this issue from two sides. First, Islam made it a pleasure and a delight for the father to have a baby girl. It became something to be proud of after being something to be ashamed of in the past. Second, it made it clear that the woman is not exclusively responsible for the sex of the child. So don't point your finger at her for that. Allah explained in Surah An-Najm, وَأَنَّهُ خَلَقَ الزَّوْجَيْنِ الدَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ إِذَا تُمْنَى He is the one who created two genders, male and female, from the male sperm emitted. If we combine that verse with the one that we read in the last chapter, we get the full picture. The human is created from a mixture of male and female reproductive fluids. However, what determines the gender is the male sperm. Now let's read the same exact information but from modern scientific sources. Each embryo carries 23 chromosome pairs, half from the father and half from the mother. From among those 23 pairs, one pair is called the sex chromosome. At conception, each embryo gets an X chromosome from the mother and either X or Y chromosome from the father. If it gets X from the father, that will be a girl. If it gets Y from the father, that will be a boy. The chromosome of the father is the one that determines the sex of the baby, not the one from the mother. This is the third example that shows the difference between the words of Allah and ancient science and beliefs. Wait to see more. To me, this one is the most impressive of all. During the time when people believed in the cheese analogy, menstruation blood clotting to create a baby the same way milk turns into a cheese, the theory that was introduced by the two most repeatable sources of knowledge in the 7th century, the books of Aristotle and the Bible. Allah surprised everyone by denying all of these myths and sharing with us an image of every step in the embryo development. Images described in the Quran that we could never see for hundreds of years until the invention of the ultrasound machine. 
Let's go through the images Allah provided in the Quran 1400 years ago first and then compare these images to what we see using the ultrasound machine today. Allah says in Surah Az-Zumar, يَخْلُقَكُمْ فِي بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ خَلْقًا مِنْ بَعْدِ خَلْقٍ Allah creates you in the wombs of your mothers in stages, one development stage after another. Let's go through every development stage in Surah Al-Hajj. ثُمَّ مِنْ نُطَفَةٍ ثم من علقة ثم من بطقة. Remember the mixture between male and female fluids that we talked about? Allah keeps part of it in a secure place, i.e. the mother's womb. ثم خلقنا النطفة علقة. Then Allah turns it into a leech. Wait, what? Leech? Allah is describing this stage in the embryo development with the word leech. Hmm, let's investigate. This is an image of a leech. And this is an image of the human embryo in this stage. This is a close-up image of a leech, and this is a close-up image of the human embryo in this stage. A leech attaches itself to the skin, sucking blood for nutrition, and the embryo at that stage attaches itself to the wall of the uterus to obtain nutrition from the mother's blood cycle. This one-word description in the Qur'an provided the visual shape of the embryo as well as its function. Subhanallah. Let's go to the next development stage. ثُمَّ مِنْ عَلَقَ ثُمَّ مِنْ مُضْغَ Allah describes the next stage with the word مُضْغَ. This word refers to a piece of meat that was already bitten by someone. If you have a piece of meat for dinner, after you take a bite, you call the remaining part a مُضْغَ. This is an image taken by a modern ultrasound machine of the embryo at that stage. Does it look like a bitten piece of meat? Can you see the teeth marks on it? These impressive words use very simple language that is easy to understand by people in every era. It is not using complex languages for PhD candidates. It is for everyone. Easy to understand for people in the 7th century and easy to understand for us today. Subhanallah again. Now let's read it fully together. Ya ayyuhan nas, in kuntum fi raybin min al-ba'ati fa inna khalaqnakum min turab, thumma min nutfa, thumma min alaqa, thumma min mudgha. O humanity, if you doubt the fact that I will resurrect you after death, I will give you a sign. I created Adam from dust, then created human from a drop of mixed reproductive fluid, male and female. Then from what looks like a leech. Then from what looks like a bitten piece of meat. Fully formed and unformed, to make it clear to you. Then kept you in the womb for an appointed time. Then brought you forth as infants. Remember, that was revealed while people believed in the Aristotle's cheese theory. This is Dr. Keith L. Moore. According to the American Association of Anatomy, Keith had a significant impact on anatomical medical education. Not only at a national, but also at an international level. Dr. Keith authored 16 anatomy books. He was the recipient of two honorary doctorate of science degrees. The first from the Ohio State University in 2012, and the second from the Western University in 2015. Keith was truly an anatomy legend and will be missed by all. And this was his testimony. Intensive studies of the Quran and Hadith in the last four years have revealed a system for classifying human embryos that is amazing since it was recorded in the 7th century AD. Little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th, 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolute, absolutely no scientific training. If you think that's it for our video today, you're wrong. Wait, I have more to tell you. But before I continue, I want to ask you a favor. As you can see, this information will be very, very helpful for people seeking the truth or seeking to strengthen their faith. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, whoever leads to good is like the one who does it. 
So help this video spread by first engaging with it with a like and comment, then share it on all of your social media. You also have our permission to download it and re-upload it to your channel. You don't even have to mention our name. It is copyright free. Just help it spread. This way, we all share the reward, inshallah. Thank you. This miracle is also very impressive. In the beginning of pregnancy, more specifically on day 15, something called the primitive streak appears. According to the National Library of Medicine, the primitive streak then starts to shrink and something called the caudal eminence is derived from it. Then the coccyx arises from the caudal eminence. The location of the coccyx is at the absolute bottom of the spine. You might know it as the tailbone. Based on all of these references, we can say with confidence that this part is impressively present from the beginning of the creation during pregnancy. Thanks to all of these scientists for their amazing work and for the information they are teaching us. However, I know a shepherd who could not read and write, who lived 1,400 years ago, who also gave us the same information. Check this out. According to this Sahih Hadith, the human body is created from a small piece in the tailbone. This is in both Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Think about it. There is a great chance a lot of you are asking yourselves now, what happened to the early Muslims? As they were put in a very, very hard position. As disbelievers, of course, were pointing their fingers at the Muslims, who believe in a completely different embryology that contradicts the books of Aristotle, Galen, and the Bible. The three main sources of knowledge of that time. Did early Muslims fail and try to reinterpret the Quran to make it, you know, fit their claims? Did the early Muslims ignore the teachings of God because it doesn't fit with the Roman Western perspective? Or did they stick to their belief and ignore any common belief around them? And the obvious answer is they were much, much, much better believers than this weak generation that we have today. They rose their head high. And they said, whatever these scientists are claiming is wrong. Because Allah said the opposite. And Allah is the creator of the universe. So we believe Allah. We don't care what they are saying. The all-knowing, the all-wise gave us the absolute truth. If the scientists disagree, that is because of their ignorance. As simple as that. There are a lot of debates in history that we have recorded and authenticated that show them sticking to their faith no matter what. For example, this book that I have behind me right now. It is called Fath al-Bari. Go to part 11, page 480. It says, وَزَحَمَ أَهْلُ التَّشْرِيحِ أَنَّ الْمَنِيَّ يَقُومْ بَعَقْدَ دَمِّ الْحَيْطِ وَأَحَدِيثُ الْبَابِ تُبْتِلْ ذَلِكِ the experts in surgery claim that the semen turns the menstruation blood into solid to create a baby, like milk turning to cheese. And the evidence from Quran and Hadith show that they are wrong. Full stop. Also in this book, al Jami' Al-Ahkam Al-Quran by Al-Imam Al-Qurtubi, part 16, page 343. Zamu and al janin yatakawa min ma'il rajul wahdu. Was sahih? أن الخلق يقوم من ماء الرجل والمرأة. They claim that the baby is created only from the fluid of the man. They are wrong because Allah told us in the Quran that it is created from a mixture between both male and female reproductive fluids. نص الآية القرآنية لا يحتمل التأويل. We cannot reinterpret the words of God to please the scientists. That was him responding to the students of Galen. And after more than 1,000 years of debates between Muslims sticking firmly to their faith and Islamophobes mocking them, only now has technology become good enough to stop the guesswork and to actually observe, to actually see what happens to the embryo and confirm that the words of Allah were correct and to deny all the false claims of the disbelievers and of the people of the book and of the claimed scientists. This is a huge eye-opener to those young Muslims in Gen Z who need to learn how to be proud of their faith and how to stop being puppies to the Western culture, who need to know how blessed they are to have access to the words of God himself, 
who need to know that they have to educate others who are in ignorance instead of learning falsehood from them. Allah said in Surah An-Nisa, الذين يتخذون الكافرين أولياء من دون المؤمنين أيبتغون عندهم العزة فإن العزة لله جميعا Those who choose the disbelievers as allies instead of the believers Do they seek honor and power through their company? Surely all honor and power belongs to Allah alone Anyway, back to our original subject The embryology miracles The question is to you now If Muhammad peace and blessing be upon him made up the Quran by collecting information from surrounding cultures, why didn't he just copy their mistakes? This way he would avoid the conflict between him and the scientists and the people of the book of that era. And more importantly, from where did he get the ultrasonic machine to write all of these accurate descriptions 1400 years ago? Allah said in Surah Fussilat, سنريهم آياتنا في الآفاق وفي أنفسهم حتى يتبين لهم أنه الحق We will show them our signs in the universe and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that this Quran is the truth If you want more information about what we talked about in that video if you have any questions write in the comments or join our discord and let's have a real conversation link is in the description And if you want to watch more evidence of Islam videos and see more miracles of the Quran and Sunnah, check out this playlist. I am sure you will love it. Let me remind you once more. This information might be an eye-opener to someone who is in desperate need of guidance. Someone who is sincerely looking for God. Don't miss your opportunity to share the reward with us by helping this video spread as much as possible. And also, let us know your opinion in the comments. Do you think this new way of making video with a lot of details and a lot of reference, is it beneficial or boring? We will make our next videos based on your feedback. Thanks and salam alaykum. <laughs> إذ يتلقى المتلقيان عن اليمين وعن الشمال قعيد ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد وجاء سكرة الموت بالحق ذلك ذلك ما كنت منه تحيد وجاءت سكرة الموت بالحق ذلك ما كنت منه تحيد ونفخ في الصور ذلك يوم الوعيد وجاءت كل نفس معها سائق وشهيد لقد كنت في غفلة من هذا فكشفنا عنك غطاء فبصرك اليوم حديد وقال قرينه هذا ما لدي عتيد ألقيا في جهنم ألقيا في جهنم كل كفار عنيد مناع للخير غير معتد مريب الذي جعل مع الله إلها آخر فألقياه في العذاب الشديد قال قرينه ربنا ما أطغيته ولكن ربنا ما أطغيته ولكن كان في ضلال 
بعيد قال لا تختصموا لدي قال لا تختصموا لدي وقد قدمت إليكم بالوعيد ما يبدل القول لدي وما أنا بظلام ما يبدل القول لدي وما أنا بظلام للعبيد يوم نقول لجهنم يوم نقول لجهنم هل امتلأت وتقول يوم نقول لجهنم هل امتلأت وتقول وتقول هل من مزيد وأزلفت الجنة للمتقين غير بعيد هذا ما توعدون لكل أواب حفيظ من خشي الرحمن من خشي الرحمن بالغيب وجاء بقلب منيب ادخلوها بسلام ادخلوها بسلام ذلك يوم الخلود لهم ما يشاءون فيها لهم ما يشاءون فيها ولدينا مزيد